Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Mitch Tobel of CGT Marketing. So hi, Mitch. Um, hey, how you doing, Elizabeth? Good. So why do people hire you instead of anybody else? It's because not only are we focused on a company's profits using marketing, but we blend um, years of marketing strategy and know-how with the latest technology, tactics, and tools. That's why our tagline is intelligent marketing, yield profitable results. So we're in spring of 2021. <laughs> I know. We what are. do you think is most important for marketing right now? Things have changed a lot. And so really keeping up with all that. So what are some of the changes that people need to be aware of? Well, I could tell you from a marketing perspective, because, you know, I'm a marketing guy is that uh, right now uh, I've shifted the culture of my company to be agile, meaning that we fail fast, fail often, everything in small little experiments because our environment is changing rapidly. We're in the tail, hopefully the tail end of the pandemic. We have no idea what the future is gonna hold. In discussions with companies about future events, everybody looks around and says, what are we gonna do? And no one knows. So actually, you know, it's interesting you asked that. I just did a webinar marketing yourself out of, marketing your way out of COVID rather. And I came up with a sort of a three fundamentals that we have seen be really successful. One is act human, two is be digital, and three is get agile. If you embody those three things, you will be successful with each marketing dollar you spend right now and going into the future. So if somebody wants to work with you and they come to you, how does the first meeting go? What does it look like if I sit down with you? I say, Mitch, I want to redo my website. I need social media. I need a whole marketing plan. Right. So, so I'm going to uh, uh, start by talking about your business and where you want your business to go because marketing is subservient to the business goals. Marketing helps businesses get to where they need. It's not an end in and of itself. A lot of my colleagues are very much into getting number of likes and kudos, and that's not what marketing is for. Marketing for is helping business get to where they want to go. So I'll talk about your objectives, what's your end game, where do you want to go, and then back up from there to where we are today. Talk about your specific target markets, and if you have done buyer personas, which I hope so, because they're critical to the success of any future marketing effort. And then from there, it's a selection of choosing the proper strategy and the right channels to do it. And today, because COVID has been gas, gasoline on a fire, you know, uh, the digital transformation over the past seven years has just blown up e -com, blown up everything. Has, every company has to have an appropriate digital footprint in order to be successful down the road. So part of my inquiry in the first steps is to understand what the digital footprint is today. And then when I come back with a proposal, it's like, okay, here's where you need to be with your digital footprint. And here are the steps we would take. And obviously the cost, because I am a for-profit company. Last time I checked anyway. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope we're all making money still. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do you have any success stories about companies that you've worked with where you've taken them from step A to step B? Oh, absolutely. Um, just recently, a manufacturer of, I know this is going to sound really exciting, so stay in your seat, hyperboloid connectors. That's uh, it's damn exciting. Uh, we, they did not have a digital footprint, and we've established one for them and have gotten, I mean, the stats on it are sick, you know, uh, a hundred thousand percent increase, which is ridiculous. But every month, you know, we've been dealing with them, helping them move along for the past, I think, eight, nine months. And we've seen an incredible amount of interaction uh, through social media, focusing on audiences that matter. So here's the thing. Very often, a lot of my colleagues use social media as just an engagement tool. And again, it is good to be, have engagement because that's one of the goals. But one of the goals is to move people along the sales process. So for this company, we chose social media. We chose actually, we chose two channels because the owner of the company is on Twitter. We had to do Twitter, which I didn't agree with, but that's okay. We'll take it. We'll take care of it. 
And from there, we devised programs using each channel's technology, each channel's unique environment to communicate specifically to the target markets. So they would engage and click through to their core element, which is their website. Actually, any company's core digital element is their website. That's their selling environment. And websites do such a heavy lift now because everybody's selling themselves. The normal B2B buyer is 80% through the process before they even want to talk to anybody. So where does that all fall on? That falls on the website, making sure there's enough information for each stage of the funnel. Excellent. So people come to the website and then what should the website, should it be keeping people on there? Should it be directing them to the places they want to go? Should like, how does, how do you use the website to get people to call you? So a website is a nonlinear environment. People click and go anywhere they want. And studies have shown that people just scan. They don't read. They scan and they click and they stumble through the site. So by understanding the target market so well that you know the language they use, you know who they are as a person, you can then construct a site that they feel comfortable with. If they feel comfortable with the site, they will come back. Most people stick on a site very short amount of time, but you want to impress them with the fact that you understand them. So by them feeling you understand them reduces the leap of faith they have to take to do business with you. Interesting. And then, so the social media works with the site. So do you send people from social media to the website generally? I mean, I know there are ways now they can contact you directly through links in social. Mm -hmm. What do you use mostly? So mostly uh, social media, it really replicates the sales process in a way. Um, for, for a company new to social media, I would focus uh, their budget initially on awareness, not driving traffic because it'll be too expensive. Once you have that target market generally aware and you see the numbers, you see the costs, then you move them to the second stage, which is a link directing them to information on the traffic and so forth. Um, that's not to preclude that every single post has a link to the site. Every single post has to have a link. And we use UTMs to track. We watch Google Analytics. We see what's working, what's not. Again, fail fast, fail often because you want to continually just improve and get better, react to the market. Okay. So on your website, you have top five marketing tips for startup businesses during COVID times and beyond. Mm -hmm. What are the top five tips for marketing for small businesses? So it's interesting. Well, how do you categorize a small business first? How would you categorize it? How that's a good question. You can either do it revenue or number of people. I think I do it like well, less than 10 million in revenue. Some people say okay. 50 million. I don't know. Okay, so less than 10 million, uh, uh, they're new to marketing. What I found in those size companies is that they don't put enough effort to understand who they're selling to, their target market. The more intimate, intimate knowledge you have on your target market, the more effective your communication is going to be, and you're gonna actually intentionally choose the right channels to go to them. So first step would be to make sure that your website is speaking to the target market after you've done all your research and your buyer personas. And by the way, salespeople, the people selling for you have a, yeah, unbelievable amounts of information. You just have to tap that. You have to talk to them from a marketing perspective. Once you have that intimate knowledge, the first step is to build out your website. Make sure your website, which is a livable, breathable marketing tool, your website is talking to your target market, is providing information for every step in the sales process. Next step would be then to start to reach out. Now for B2B companies, email is the workhorse. It still is, even though the amount of emails that we get continue to increase every day. Gosh, I get four to 500 emails a day, mm -hmm. but I do open some as does everybody else. And you open stuff that's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. So a complete understanding of that target market allows you to create content that's valuable. So the content also, as I said before, has to really be human. Mm -hmm. No longer, you know, the stuffy white shirts and ties, which I'm happen not to be wearing one <laughs> today. 
because we're on our own little version of Hollywood Squares, the, <laughs> you need to um, humanize your content. You're talking to humans that are, most of us are still stressed out from the pandemic, working from home, trying to figure out a path forward, trying to uh, uh, pivot our businesses, if, if I could say that, or, or repackage our services or price them out appropriately. Everybody is under some level of stress. So first thing is to be human and to understand that people are stressed and to offer solutions to alleviate some of that stress. Excellent. So if I were to build a website today from scratch, what's the most important thing I need to know, like technically even? Um, well, from a technical standpoint, the build uh, needs to be ADA compliant, uh, minimum level two, which is all the government websites are, which is really, I mean, we've been building ADA si uh, uh, compliant sites for, um, gosh, three years now, I think. And it has to be responsive, meaning it's screen agnostic. Any size screen from any device, this, the website will automatically resize. Now, if there's a lot, a tremendous amount of information or there's load time problems with mobile devices, you might want to think about using AMP uh, technology to provide a separate mobile experience. That being said, your site should load in under two seconds. Uh, an in, a, a decrease in seven second load time can increase conversions up to 70%. Yeah. For every second you improve, you get a boost in conversions. So your site has to be fast. That's what we expect in our digital world, right? Mm -hmm. We just want to push a button and go. And there are some things about, you know, mobile interfaces that you have to be careful of. No hovering. We all have fat fingers, so you can't have tiny little things or buttons <laughs> next to each other. You got to allow space for the fat finger push. Yeah. You know, fun stuff like that. Yeah, and so for people that don't know what ADA compliant is, the, this became important late last year, but it's American with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, so uh, government uh, created these regulations or rules rather regulations created afterwards several years ago uh, so that every website can be accessed through the technology that a person with some type of disability can interface with. If you're blind, it'll read to you. If you're colorblind, you can adjust the contrast. If you have difficulty seeing, you can adjust the size of the type. All these things, and, and actually there are sites, uh, technology that actually read the site to a person. So um, your site has to conform to that. And there are tools out there for instant analysis of the site. And just as a, Unfortunately, there are uh, lawyers that all they do is scan uh, the internet looking for sites that are non-ADA compliant and then engaging in a lawsuit against them. So that's gotten a tremendous amount of news uh, over a year ago, less so now. Um, if you have a consumer facing site, you must have it. No if, ands, or buts. If you're a nonprofit, must have it. No if, ands, or buts. If you're a B2B site, you definitely should have it. If you're a small site that's getting under 10,000 a month, you, you're really not gonna come up on radar, but honestly, you should have it anyway. I mean, why not? It really doesn't add that much to the cost. So I highly recommend it. Right, well, even if you're a small site, you hope to be a big site someday, right? Yeah. Like, so, and then you are gonna be a target because what I was reading about it and the lawyers and the firm are reading about it was, since it's the American with Disabilities Act, if somebody sues you over that, you lose. <laughs> you have no justification. It doesn't matter if you didn't know. It doesn't matter if you're working on it. You, it's an absolute thing. And so mm -hmm. why not just put it in when you start? And so right. I think right. that's what a person should look for in a website company, right? Yeah, and also avoid the, it, um, especially with WordPress, people automatically threw a plug in. All right, we're ADA compliant. Not really. Um, it needs to be programmed from the ground up. There are a lot of issues around AEA compliant, and my designer and my programmer often butt heads because my designer wants to make it look one way, but that's not ADA compliant, right? You got to have sufficient contrast. So um, it's something that is a collaborative effort in order to achieve a result of it being ADA compliant. Plus, 
to me, because I'm a marketing guy, first and foremost, is that it's functional. It's working towards the goal of converting a visitor to some type of action that's meaningful to the company. So what size companies do you work with? Um, I've worked with companies as small as, uh, you know, five employees to as big as a hundred, $150 million companies. Um, I just love marketing. I love, honestly, I just love the challenges that each situation brings and then solving it, bringing strategy to bear, solving it and watching things work is just my joy. And how long have you been doing this? Do you really want to know? <laughs> <laughs> a long time let's say yeah let's say 25 plus years how's that that's good so you've kept up with all the changes as time goes on so mm. yeah i embraced i actually i embraced the change you know i have friends and colleagues that ask me how do you stay on top of it i don't really know to be honest with you i just enjoy the, you know sometimes it changes their pain in the neck you know facebook is continually changing and i just want to slap them on the head and say will you stop but they have a target on their back because of the government. Right. So do almost all the social channels. It's uh, and it's causing ripple effects in the marketing community that we all are learning to adapt to. Google is coming out with their core web vitals introduction next month. That's putting a you know, so there's continual changes on the part of all the technologies because all they want to do is be relevant to their consumers. We as marketers need to adapt to those changes so that we can still get the results and KPIs that we need to, for the companies to succeed. So how do you know about the Google changes? Like, how do you keep up with Google? Do you get, are you part of a group? Do you just do research online all the time? How do you know about that? They tell me. They tell you, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so they like you. <laughs> they like me, they really like me. Yeah, no, we... <laughs> Yeah, we keep up, you know, we read all the blogs, we're um, on listservs, you know, the amount of information we get on a daily basis is actually staggering. Um, so it's uh, uh, on my, me and my team's uh, uh, table to sift through and see what's important, what's not. You know, it's funny because um, I was asked recently by a client, hey, did you see this new feature from Facebook? You know, let's use it. I said, ho, ho, ho. Hold on there, cowboy. Let's test it. What do you mean? Well, we don't know if it works or not. You know, most of, of the new additions and new features that social media channels come out with don't work. So you have to test it. And, and um, I can't say that enough. Everything should, marketing is a great big experiment anyway. So always have to test. Yeah, I, I think that's what I like about marketing too, is it is it, it is a great big experiment and um, yeah. and it is fun. Like it's, it, if something works, it's like, yay. <laughs> I know, right? And you never know. I mean, you're putting something out into an environment you have no control over. Right. None. So the only way to reduce the risk is to understand the environment as intimately as possible. So um, it's one of the biggest hurdles uh, we as marketers face because uh, a lot of businesses really don't see the value in that and hence don't want to pay for it. But right. to really make something work, it's the effort needs to be there because if you can put the effort in, everything else will work better. Excellent. Is there anything else that you need to say before we sign up? No, I've enjoyed this very much, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Well, thank you.